Hello folks, uh, hope you enjoyed the last talk and we have some announcements for the next talk. So Ivan will be doing a great session in their booth, you can check out their sponsor booth in the expo area. And also make sure if you want to uh, like introduce the audience to any project you've been working on, you can submit a lightning talk, which will be happening before the second keynote. And now our next keynote, we have uh, Fernando Matsuri Ashikaga here. He's a PSF fellow member and a professor at, and uh, he's uh, sorry uh, if I butcher this name, FATEC San Jose Dos Campos uh, University. And he also created the first Brazilian course for teaching Python programming, which is called Python for Zombies. And today he'll be telling us about uh, the difficulties in teaching programming courses during uh, remotely during this pandemic. So, Fernando. Hi, my name is Fernando Massanori from Brazil. <laughs> uh, it's a bit earlier here. I am a computer science professor at FATEC um, in Portuguese, FATEC one of the public universities in Sao Paulo State. You see at the first slide my website with all my contacts and the URL of slides here. COVID-19 changed many things in the world. Two months ago, a UNICEF report says that at this moment, more than 1 billion students are still out of school without face-to-face -face classes worldwide. Many universities in Brazil are now without any type of classes. My university decided to go online to keep education alive, to keep contact with the students, to keep in touch with the students during the isolation. More than 75% of my students are low income. So education is an opportunity they have and the isolation may be is an invitation to give it up of their studies. A lot, of, a lot of people teach programming with Python. Maybe our first contact with the community is um, a class with Python as main language. So education is part of Python community. I will share my experiences in this talk. My experience, it's not uh, my university experiences, but uh, community, Python, Brazilian Python community experience. Work at home is very hard with kids, cats, dogs, whatever, in the same place all the time. Neighbors also make more noise than we expected. I have two dogs and five cats, and they are very social. Whenever they heard me talking with the computer in my classes, they wanted to participate. Teachers are, teachers are very communicate in their nature. In the face-to-face -face meetings, I catch in the air difficulties of my students. So improve interactions is a key poor process in remote teaching, in emergency remote teaching. My colleagues are became very frustrated in virtual classrooms. 
A survey in Brazil shows that 8% of teachers feel unable to teach online in isolation. But it's okay to be human, human. For our students, see a teacher struggling with technical issues proves that education is special, is important. Behind the screen, there are someone that thinks the education worth all these efforts. I have a static YouTube channel for flipped classrooms. There are synchronous interactions in the time of old face-to-face -face classes. So I'm a bridge between the content and the learning process of each of the students. Of course, there are so many materials on the web. So teachers send glimpses of what needs a special attention at each time. Teacher breaks new grounds, share his experiences, inspire the students. So teacher is not only a kind of knowledge delivery content, it's much more. Some years ago, I made, with the help of the Brazilian Python community, an online course. Now, in pandemic isolation, I recorded a new version of all videos, um, 200 new videos, with new playlists, uh, data structures, public data analysis, in the picture, we see a vegan zombie, Guido, and the caption say, Knights to say ni in Portuguese. Python for zombies, zombies equal beginners. Python for zombies is a Brazilian community initiative, not of my university. At this moment, we have 120,000 students with a 10% course complexion rate. That is very high. It's the first Portuguese MOOC to teach program because only 5% of Brazilian people are able to read in English. The site, the website is a Python Django open source project. There are a menu. Uh, some students prefer a simple uh, YouTube playlist, but many others choose a regular website with more order in the content. All videos are very short four minutes long. A lot of students use cell phones to see the videos. So my experience is important to use big fonts. And I have a blue yet to record the audio. The most important thing in uh, online classes is the audio. There are place to Q&A. Uh, like many other MOOCs. And a lot of exercises. So the students have a way to practice the programming skills. Because learning um, programming is... Uh, you, you, you need a lot of exercises pra, to um, learn well. My way of teaching is using flipped classrooms with Microsoft Teams is my university shows, uh, choice. And Discord 
for interactions. Um, sometimes I use other ways, like a phone call to a student without computer, or WhatsApp audios to answer some particular questions. In my classes, I use, I decide to use other students' codes to teaching. That motivates more to learn. This is a 12 years old girl coach. I also teach to kids in my city, besides university lessons, as a volunteer. Uh, this is a code, a uh, Chinese Caesar cipher code. Um, another 12 years old girl code. This time using Unicode in Python 3. It's uh, cool to use Unicode in Python to translate um, some messages to Chinese. And the answer is 42. Hitchhiker's Guide, Galax, Gal Galaxy Guide is a very popular book in Brazil. Our students' fun is the best way to learn and play attention. And for example, you see, I using RandInt and Sample from Random Library is a battery included library, but um, my sample always show 42 and run the int in the range of one to 100 always show 42. Uh, what's the trick? Python is a free software. You have access to all libraries codes. It's possible to change these codes. It's a funny way to teach what is free software. Changing the code, the code of random.py is a very fun. Object-oriented concepts is very hard to teach like inheritance or overloading. But with 42, is fun. You see a uh, int 42 class, and A is 13, and B is 7, but A plus B is 42, and print A is 42, and print B is 42, because I change the int 42 class. It's a very fun to teach object-oriented concepts. And metaprogramming also. Factorial and Fibonacci produces very humongous numbers, not in my course. In my classes, 42 is greater than Apocalypse Beast. 666. Abstract Syntax Tree is a cool library. It's possible in the future to produce automatic testing and, uh, with this library. Abstract Syntax Tree is the soul of uh, I language. I change hello world response for 42, of course. Uh, so as it's a kind of glimpses of interesting things to students study in the future. Uh, metaprogramming, uh, overloading, inheritance, um, uh, meta also abstract syntax tree. Conclusion. These students have a lot of distraction at home. 
like a message from a crush in a dating app. And so short videos works very well. I record the synchronous interactions to late review. My exams, exams have completely changed. Are now a new way to fix concepts to learn more. In introduction to programming, 9% of my students concludes the course. It makes me very happy. The Python community are also using my MOOC with um, 70 new 70,000 new inscriptions and 2 million views. The website have independent videos and we have in the website 4,000 new inscriptions in the last three months. And this news makes me very happy. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Panel. Let me see if anyone has any questions. Any folks who can put your questions in the chat. So there's like a 30 second delay here and the chat. So let's wait for the questions. Uh, may maybe offline questions. Yes, you can do offline questions. So uh, you can go to the 2020 slash stage slash Hyderabad. Yes. The audience can also go there and put their questions there. You can answer them. Uh, thank you for your talk. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. bye. From Brazil.